welcome to GSC live mornings pastor Charlie from Good Shepherd Lutheran Church welcome members and friends of Good Shepherd this morning I'm drinking my cup of coffee from this cup given to me by my son uh, when he graduated from Minnesota uh, medical school and yes he gave me a gift when he graduated um, I probably gave him something too I don't remember um, and a few years ago now anyway I'm, I'm drinking this cup this morning because I'm celebrating the gift of science. Now, science is science. Um, it's not a philosophy, uh, even though there are some philosophies within the science uh, or how science is uh, worked with. But science is science. Uh, it's the study of the natural world that God created, and God gave us these wonderful brains to try to figure out this wonderful world that God created and how God works uh, with the elemental pieces of this world. Uh, science is science. Um, and uh, science is also telling us, research is telling us, that wearing a mask is helping uh, in our country, in our society, in our world, to uh, slow the spread of this coronavirus, to protect each other. So again, I'm encouraging you to wear a mask. And if wearing a mask is uncomfortable or you're claustrophobic or have some of those real issues with wearing a mask, I encourage you to try some different masks because not all masks are the same. Some are more or less comfortable than others. And um, if you're looking for the right mask and haven't found it, call our office, or give me a call because we have people at our church that have made hundreds upon hundreds of masks and have given them away. And we have quite a collection of masks on hand right now for this very purpose for people to be able to find a mask that works well for them um, just an example you know, i have this beautiful reversible green mask uh, with loops my wife wears this one she found this one most comfortable it's kind of called a cone mask with a wire it has loops and just sometimes i just like to wear a theme mask like john deere anyway um a wide variety of masks and i can help you but continuing in my lifting up of science this morning um, as um, part of my understanding of how we are in relationship with God and one another, um, I think about love for neighbor. And I want to share what a former confirmation student of mine who went on to the University of Michigan to get her PhD in science, in chemistry to be specific, she writes this this morning. I wear my mask while in public for three reasons. One, humility. I don't know if I have COVID, but it's clear that people can spread the disease before they have symptoms. Number two, kindness. I don't know if the person I am near has a kid battling cancer or cares for their elderly parent. While I might be fine, they might not be. Number three, community. I want my community to thrive, businesses to stay open, employees to stay healthy. Keeping a lid on COVID helps us all. Thank you, Carrie. I'm going to move on uh, to Psalm 91 <clears throat> to talk about how, how we can be and how we are uh, in this time. Psalm 91 verses 9 and 10. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation, no evil will befall you, nor shall affliction come near your dwelling. Hmm. Comforting promise, huge promise. Let's read more from William Plaker. Open ourselves to the suffering of others without limit and we can destroy ourselves, taking on more pain than we can bear. There is, however, no such thing as more pain than God can bear. And part of what it means to trust God is to know that God can and will bear whatever cost and suffering faithfulness in love may require. To know such a God loves us, enables us to take risks of a kind we could not otherwise dare in caring for others. Another thought. A spiritual director comments to those with whom she works. Fear 
is the cheapest house on the block. I'd like you, I'd like to see you living in better conditions. Love that. The psalmist imagines better conditions. The most high is your habitation. We live and move and have our being in God, according to Acts 17, 28. We live and move and have our being in God. The poetry of the next part of the psalm is over the top. How could it be true that no evil will befall someone in this life? The forces arrayed against the whole creation's flourishing are powerful. From the pain of deception and distress to the reality of Alzheimer's disease, cancer, and COVID. We know affliction. Surely the Israelite people did as well. The psalmist is not proclaiming that God's people will live a pain-free life, but rather that nothing will be able to separate God's people from God's love. See Romans chapter 8. God is our dwelling place. Jesus took up residence with us so that we might know our true home to be in God. Let's pray. God, we are grateful for your presence with us and our belonging in you. Through all the trials of life, be our home. Protect us from all that threatens our security and the security of others that is in you. Amen. Blessings to everyone. I hope this didn't go too long today. Have a great weekend.